Thank you for joining us for, for today's session. Uh, I am going to be the address. Um, a question I'm seeing on chat box from Tanda Zile before we continue. It seems she's experiencing an audio problem. Um, can you elaborate a bit further? Tanda Zile, are you able to get us? Uh, afternoon, colleagues. Afternoon. Yes, we, we can get you loud and clear now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please continue indicating on chat box, colleagues, if you are encountering any technical issues so that we can um, help you out so that we are able to all join in um, the session. So at this point, colleagues, I think we can start with our introductions so that we can be able to refer um, to each other with our names and so that we are able to know who have joined us for, for today's session. So kindly introduce yourself by name and where you are joining from. And if you are joining with any other colleagues, please also have them introduce themselves. We can also use the chat box um, for introductions. I am going to start with the hospice team. Um, Pius, please introduce yourself. Good greetings, colleagues. My name is Pius Puma. I placed the episode in hospice as well. Morning, team. Um, uh, it's so humbling to have you today. My name is Sandy from Aswatin Hospice at Home. Uh, afternoon, team. Sandy from Kelly here from Aswatin Hospice at Home. Thank you. So, good afternoon, team. Uh, my name is Congress Medane. Here, Hospice. Thank you. Thank you for the introductions. Can we continue to Malaika? Malaika, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Malaika Serene. I'm from Echo India, and um, I'm looking forward for the session. Thank you. Thank you, Malaika. Can we move to Nongu Mele Lomsana? Uh, Nombu Melelo, please introduce yourself. Hey, good afternoon, team. My name is Nombu Melelo Msang. I am joining uh, around Matapa. I'm alone. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thank you for joining us, Nkosi. Um, Tanda Zile. Um, good afternoon once again. It's Sanazilis Milani here from uh, Manzini Government Hospital. I'll be joining with a uh, social worker, <laughs> Nelson Mazibubo. Then this is Milani will be joining from uh, the conference room. Thank you. Thank you, Tanazile. Can we have um, Dr. Sumetane introduce himself? Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Dr. Smatlani from Manzini Government Hospital. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Taylor. Um, can we have Maria Zodwa introducing herself? Okay. She's okay. um, thank you for, for joining us, colleagues, and thank you for those introductions. Um, for any other colleagues that will be joining us during the session, we hope that they will also introduce themselves um, via chat box because now we are continuing with um, today's session. So for our last session, we were looking at monitoring for opioid efficacy side effects and um, substance abuse, substance um, use disorder, sorry. And we're taken through by Dr. Smetlane. Um, so he is also continuing today, but we are going to be looking at converting from short acting to long acting opioids. Um, before we get into this presentation, colleagues, can we remember to keep our microphones muted during the session? 
And if there's any question or concern during the presentation, we can use the chat box um, or use the raise of hand. But when the presentation is over, we can then start unmuting and probably asking um, questions if we have any. And upon unmuting, can we remember to silence our gadgets so that there is no background noise um, disturbing during the session? So at this point, colleagues, without wasting any time, I'd like to ask Dr. Smetlane um, to continue with today's presentation on converting from short acting to long acting options. Um, over to you, Dawatela. We have started sharing the screen. Oh, it's already showing. Yes, it's, it's showing, Dawatela. It's showing. All from your side, you projected. Yes, we have projected. Oh, I thought I was going to share. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, Okay, basically today's uh, presentation won't be that long. Um, my name is Dr. Smatlani, so we are, we'll just be continuation from the uh, one we did last time. We're looking at converting now from short acting to long acting operates. We can move to the next slide. So just a, a brief introduction about opioids. Opioids are a class of drugs that derive from or mimic natural uh, substances found in the opium poppy plant. This can be synthetic and we have also the natural forms. Um, they can be, um, okay, uh, this particular medication or drugs are metabolized by the liver and secreted by the kidneys. These are I always emphasizes so that we know how to monitor our patients that doing regular blood uh, wake up to check that the patients are not having this complication is always a good uh, thing to do. So they can be, there are many classifications, but uh, just uh, summarize a few here. They can be classified based on activity on opioid receptors into full agonist partial agonist, agonist antagonist, which have both uh, functions and also the antagonist. They can also be classified into rapid acting uh, onset, I mean, rapid onset, short and long acting on the basis of the pharmacokinetic characteristics. The short acting opioids have rapid increase and decrease in serum levels while the long-acting ones are formulated to release drug more gradually into the bloodstream or to have a long half-life for prolonged activity. They can also be classified based on their chemical structure. The medication choice and dosage is based on risk for adverse outcomes, prior effective doses for those who have received them before, and also the type of comorbidities that the patients have as we have talked about uh, how important the uh, renal and the kidney, the liver function is to these kind of patients. Also concomitant uh, medications and response to therapy. Um, short acting opioids are indicated for short term relief of moderate to severe pain on as needed basis. This is mainly for breakthrough pains. Um, these medications are often used in conjunction with long-acting opioids to help relieve breakthrough pains when we, when we introduce the long-acting ones. And sometimes you find that patients can be on a combination of both short-acting and long-acting for some time. We'll look at uh, the reasons for that. Most short-acting opioids have a half-life of three to four hours. So it's not uncommon for patients if you are giving them and expecting them to take medication for hourly for them to start complaining about pain after three hours. The oral preparations, they reach maximum concentration uh, within 60 minutes in the body, while the subcutaneous one, they take uh, 30 minutes. The intravenous ones, uh, they, uh, they act quickly because they reach the maximum concentration in five minutes. 
So depending on why we want to introduce them and how the condition of a patient is, we can choose which one to give at that time as an emergency. Uh, for extended uh, release or long acting opioids, um, these ones, they have a half-life of approximately 12 hours. It ranges between eight to 72 hours. Should only be considered in patients with severe continuous pain who received immediate release or short acting opioids daily for at least one week. So we don't, uh, we're not expected to start with uh, long acting opioids because you don't know the, how a uh, patient's going to react to them. So you need to start with short acting first. Never prescribe uh, long acting opioids for intermittent use. Avoid or use with additional caution in renal and hepatic uh, failure patients because of decreased clearance, which can lead to accumulation of the drug to toxic levels. Avoid the use of combination of short acting and long acting opioids on a long term basis if possible. If possible, due to potential risk and low return to uh, chronic uh, pain control with such an approach. And sometimes it even uh, causes confusion amongst patients to understand what are they really, how, how to take the medication if we combine the two. Choose their uh, the, uh, long acting upwards with predictable pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics to minimize unintended overdose risk. So, for example, with us who are using morphine a lot, it's always advisable if you move from if we are using the short acting, we should stick uh, to the morphine. And when you go to transition to long acting, we should try by all means to use the, the same track so that uh, at least we already know how the patient responded previously to it. So now coming to uh, the transition from short acting to long acting. The principle is that we start slow and go slow. We start with a low dose and start type So, Dr. Smetani, I think we, we are losing you there. Um, I'm not sure if there's any issues with um, your audio. Uh, are you able to, to hear us? Are you able to hear us, colleagues? I'm not sure if we have just lost Dr. Smetani or the problem is only on our side. Hello, Messi. Hello. Yeah, 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 we can hear you. Dr. Smetlan is actually trying to move closer to the uh, Wi-Fi source. So can okay. you actually just give us two minutes? He'll be back on. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. for that. Um, can okay. we give Dr. Smetlan for a couple of minutes while he's still trying to reconnect? Recording in progress. This <laughs> one. <laughs>
um, thank you colleagues for your patience. I think Dr. Smetani has, has sorted out um, the Wi-Fi issue on his side. Um, whenever you are ready, Dr. Taylor, can we please continue with the presentation? Can we give him a few minutes, colleagues, as he searches in, but I think um, some of the issues have been sorted. Dr. Smetani, are you able to hear us? It, it seems like um, we are not able to get Dogotela. I'm not sure if there's anyone from the Manzini government hospital team that can be able to um, assist us. Yes, colleagues, uh, we're having just a little bit glitch. I think we'll be joining like in no time. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tanasile. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. 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 Thank uh, these long acting upwards, dosage upwards over several days to weeks until we get good sedation. I mean, analgesia without sedation or impairment. We allow patients to be the leader in this case because uh, pain is a subjective feeling which patients feel it or experience it better than us as health workers and we need to understand them so that they don't end up moving around different facilities while we are not managing their pain well. Um, we leave patients on short acting opioids for breakthrough pains during this transition. When possible, use the same class opioid analgesia for long acting and short acting. So like uh, the common one, as I said, is the morphine that we use. So it's better to keep patients on the same class during this transition. Um, initial dose of extended uh, release uh, opioid is low. It may not even provide additional relief for uh, pain relief for several days, two weeks. So it's not about uh, um, starting with the uh, effective dose when you start. We just need to introduce it slowly and then titrate accordingly. There's no rush. The long acting opioids have uh, also uh, a primary pain prevention effect where it suppresses the baseline pain and may also lower the intensity of flares. So you don't get to have many breakthrough pains when you are on long acting uh, opioids, but they do not eliminate the, uh, breakthrough, the breakthrough pain. Thank you, we can continue. Uh, we have to be careful to avoid supplementing or potentiating extended release opioids with benzodiazepines, muscle relaxants, alcohol, and other sedatives until a maintenance dose is achieved. Short acting opioids and auxiliary medication may be reduced or eliminated after stabilization with long acting opioids. Um, start titration, the titration. Uh, for uh, long-acting opioids should start after 72 hours of starting extended uh, release opioids. And there's no rush as we have already mentioned before. So this titration can take uh, about six to 12 weeks to achieve the desired uh, uh, level. However, there's another uh, issue that we need to be careful about to consider when we do the transition. Uh, which is the issue of cross tolerance. So to accommodate for this, we need to reduce the dose of the long acting, uh, the calculated dose of the long acting medication or opioids by about 30% to accommodate for unknown cross tolerance. Then we titrate accordingly to the desired goal. Um, it has been noted that there's wide variation in, um, of this uh, cross tolerance amongst individual opioid drugs. Uh, however, it's suspected that it's multifactorial, but the exact mechanism is poorly understood at this point in time. Um, incomplete cost tolerance can lead to greater than anticipated potency in the new opioid. Even at the same uh, with the when we are using the same class analogies. So in the, um, during the transition, we have to uh, take into consideration these issues. Uh, that can happen. So it's unpredictable how patients are going to respond to the long acting when we transition. Some patients can settle comfortably on mixture of short acting opioids, long acting opioids and auxiliary medication uh, without any problem. So it's not uh, 
and head off for patients to be on all these medications at the same time. Some patients will have pseudo addiction as they visit multiple physicians, uh, hoping for better pain management. This mainly emanates from patients who are poorly uh, controlled, uh, who end up uh, going to other facilities, hoping to get better uh, treatment outcome. This can be avoided by ensuring effective communication channels in our facilities where patients or family members should be able to call the hospital to inform if pain control is not achieved. Without stressing, there should be a direct line that they can use any time of the day and there should be someone to answer to their questions and also address their concerns when they call. Some reports shows that not all long-acting opioids last the recommended uh, prescription interval. For example, some of the uh, opioids which are uh, given at a frequency of 12 hours, they have been found that after eight hours in some patients, they are already um, uh, gone out of the system. So patients, they start uh, uh, having pain. So to cater for that, uh, those kind of patients, then we give them the short acting, uh, a mix of short acting and long acting opioids. Breakthrough pains may occur more frequently in patients on long acting opioids due to increase in activity, which uh, uh, is normally as a benefit of uh, using the long acting opioids. So you'll find that uh, because these patients will have period where they are pain free, then they'll be increased in their uh, physical activity when they're pain free, and then that may exacerbate the pain or cause other forms of pain. Therefore, an increase in the number of flares, we have to know that it doesn't necessarily always mean that our medication is not working. It only sometimes also indicates that um, the patients, the quality of life has improved, then they are more active and they start having other uh, pains. This uh, table is just uh, summarizing some of the long acting and short acting opioids um, and the route of administration. Uh, we know that the common one that we use in our setting, the morphine, we do have short acting and the long acting form. The long acting form, we do have the 24, the one that we administer uh, every 24 hours and the one that we administer every 12 hours. Um, it's quite a good medication because it can be administer, administered uh, in many ways. We have oral, parenteral, rectal, intrathecal, and epidural. Um, I won't go much to the other ones. Um, we can go to the next slide. So effective analgesic therapy or pain management improves quality of life. Chronic uh, pain can interfere with your daily activities, such as working, having a social life, and taking care of yourself or others. It can lead to depression, anxiety, trouble sleeping, which can make the pain worse. It may interfere with the person's sleep pattern, their sexual activity, their ability to work and conduct daily activities, and it can cause emotional distress and lead to serious mental health problems, including depression. So pain management is very important and how we uh, listen to our patients is also important to make sure that we do the best for them. I think this is basically the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.
So the dog. Apologies, colleagues. Um, thank you, Pascal, for indicating that we had muted. Um, thank you, Dogotela, for for the lovely and info, informative um, presentation. I believe everyone was able to follow through the presentation, and that now we are better equipped at how we can convert from short acting to long acting opioids, ensuring that our clients don't maybe remain sedated or impaired during that conversion. Um, at this point, colleagues, can we? Um, ask any questions or ask for clarity or make any comments on the presentation. Um, there's a hand from Mr. Matlam. We can use the raise of hand or a chat box for asking questions. Mr. Matlam. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Doug. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, last week we had a very uh, a case uh, whereby a patient uh, was given injectable, so he has all these uh, pricks, pricks on his board, which means um, maybe she got it from another uh, doctor. I'm just asking in case we are faced with such patient, especially those who can maybe get the medication from the private unit and they are not part of this uh, training which we are getting today. Could maybe how best we can advise those patients in terms of converting them to the long acting. Sometimes they feel like the long acting is not working, and then they want uh, the short acting now and now and now uh, because they feel like it's the one that is working for them. Maybe how best we can advise them uh, on that. Another question, maybe there's also this message that usually you find that as helpers we are tempted to say that uh, take this medication, you will take it when you have severe pain. Uh, so they give the patient the medication, you ask the, medic, the patient, when are you taking this tablet? This, the patient will say, uh, they say the hospital must take it when I have severe pain. Yet the water has advised us today that uh, we need to not use these drugs as for PRN. They have to be provided on time as the principles of medical uh, uh, opioid use. So I don't know what advice you can share on that issue of taking the drug when you have severe pain, meaning they are referring to the long acting, especially the tablets. And also uh, there's this issue of clients uh, window shopping uh, for, for the drugs. One will move from this facility to the other, as we have mentioned. And now in the country, we have this challenge of CMIS. Other facilities have it, others don't have. And then now as healthcare, as we're not documenting that much, I don't know how the, we can be able to manage such patients in terms of moving them, maybe from short acting to long acting with the issue of CMIS. I'm aware that in Villa last time, uh, advisors on documentation and how the prescription is could go around. But I don't know the, what they are in your experience uh, in the practice on the ground, what you can advise as healthcare workers in terms of that. I'm aware that uh, you, are, you advise is very preferred that we move from, uh, we switch from short acting to long acting of the similar drug like morphine to morphine. But then the concern is on the, but I'm, I'm aware that in our next session we'll be looking at those uh, opioids if I may be moving up the cross uh, opioids like moving from uh, traumatol to the other, you know. Maybe we will get it there. We'll say. Then now I have a patient on on that. Maybe a short brief on that one. Maybe if it can be an advice. If you are faced with a client on that, while we are still waiting to have that presentation, maybe next. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Doctor, you have okay. Thank you very much. I think with regard to patients, um, uh, the most important thing is education. Like we do in many programs where before you put patient on any medication which is considered to be a dangerous drug, you need to educate them thoroughly in terms of what you are giving them, how does it work, how are you going to modify it in case that you don't reach the, the, um, the desired outcome that you are planning on. And they should clearly understand so that when they are frustrated, they have challenges. They it shouldn't reach the level where they don't trust you instead going to other facilities to get that. 
So they must trust the system that they are using through a proper education. If you educate them well, you'll find that they'll help you by leading you to where they are supposed to, you are supposed to take them. But if we don't inform the patients well, then they don't have enough information. They'll keep going around because they'll be getting uh, information that is contradicting whatever the last person said everywhere they are going. So I think basically that's the most important thing about uh, the patients. Also the transitioning from short acting to long acting. Try not to stop the long acting immediately and the patients, they must understand why you are transitioning to the long acting. The benefits that they're going to have, they must understand while you also tell them that they cannot leave the short acting until they are well controlled on the long acting. So I think with education, because that, that's all the challenges that they'll meet everywhere they go. But if you teach them well, they can also even teach other people about such. Then on the using the same uh, track for short acting and long acting, it's just basically to be on the safe side because you have already been exposed a patient to a certain track and you've seen how they tolerate it. They tolerated the track. If they tolerated it better, it's always advisable to when you transition to the long acting, then you use the similar track because then they have less, uh, for example, they have less side effects or no serious side effects from that one. But those that you are transitioning for other reasons, then you need to can consider a different preparation of track. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Um, thank you, Dr. Matane. I think Mr. Matangu has been answered. Uh, I am seeing a hand from Nungu Melodongshanga. I believe she also has a question. You can unmute yourself, um, Hosi. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matane, for that presentation. I think we have gained a, a lot. In Now I just have a, a concern. Maybe it's out of curiosity. Is there a way? we can try to work together with those uh, doctors or healthcare workers who are business centered, where you find that they, they, they put patients on long acting together with short acting only to, for them to benefit from, from the patients, not taking into consideration what is happening with the patients is they take both opioids at the same time. Thank you very much, Doc. Okay, thank you. Um, with regard, yes, I mean, especially the private sector is a bit difficult to, to manage them. But we hope our pharmaceutical uh, department from the ministry is, is working towards making sure that the standards are the same as uh, the way we practice in public and private, especially for this kind of medication, which uh, uh, can cause uh, serious problems for the country. So we hope in that as we keep improving, there will be regulation that will affect all the sectors involved public and private. Thank you, Dovatela. Um, do we have any other questions or comments, colleagues, on the presentation? We can use the chat box to ask or we can raise our hand. Um, there is a hand from Sibomi Nile. Good afternoon, colleagues, and thank you so much, Dr. Smokane. Uh, my worry was uh, the problem of drugs in the country. As we said, 
depend that people are put on most women. After a short while, we don't get the morphine, or the patient won't get the morphine. How can you advise us what to do? I'm sure maybe you've answered it through, through the question put by Matam here. What, what, what can be the advice for that short period? Because seemingly I'm going to do another titration to maybe something else. What, what could be what could be maybe a, a, a drug of choice from the morphine for that particular short period of time? And maybe some of our clients will find that they are even far from from these facilities, and you find that when you go there on an outreach, you don't find them with the drug that is the morphine. Yet there is something in, in a hospital. What, what do you do there? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey, this one is it's quite difficult where we, we have uh, inconsistent supply of medication. Um, we are hoping and praying that things get to improve because uh, I think the issue of palliative care, um, now with education even amongst our authorities, the education is changing things a lot. Um, the availability of uh, morphine, for example, is improving. We still have challenges with tramadol because it ends up being used for other things even in our facilities yet to be prescribed uh, more regularly than, than morphine, even for short-term pay. So yeah, that one is a bit difficult. I, I can get also assistance from our colleagues in terms of how best can we do. Should we just keep interchanging them because now when you start the new uh, opioid it means now you need to start uh, with a reduced dose and titrate accordingly how how do you get the confidence of the patient if you start doing that uh, i am seeing a hand from Thank you, thank you, Messi. It's just, uh, I, I, I'm thinking aloud. I, I'm not sure whether the country does have a committee that is responsible for sustainability of our opioids as a palliative care team or palliative care workers. Since I, I, I do feel that there, there is a problem that is always created by the inner availability of these opioids to patients who have already been on on this on the morphine, and then all of a sudden it is out of stock. I was thinking maybe if there could be a committee that is just for for the purpose that the morphine is always available, so that they they always order it, and if it's about to be finished, they make us aware so that we maybe make arrangements that the liquid that we have is prescribed for those in need. I, I, I don't know, it's just my, my, my thinking aloud. I, I, I don't know whether maybe the committee is there, it's just me, I, I am not aware of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Kosti for the response. Um, I don't know if anyone also has something to say based on um, Smoyla's question and the one that was also posed by Dr. Taylor. Do we have any other comments or, or question on how we can best tackle the issue? Uh, maybe concerning this issue, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm aware that uh, um, Sometimes morphine, the, uh, the, the, the short acting one is there in Baban. But then uh, it's unfortunate that Sister Felicity couldn't make it today. She will give us on the pictures what is happening in terms of its availability because normally she's at close range on it. Maybe our session flow manager will see it. Uh, maybe next uh, session when we'll be looking at the prescribing and 
conversions in the one next session, then if she is there, we will remind, remember the question and ask her, would say, what is happening on it? I think she can have something for us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mashamo. Um, thank you, colleagues, for the lively um, discussions and interactions. It is always um, eye-opening whenever we ask such questions and the kind of feedback or responses that we get actually help us as we continue to work. So in the interest of time, colleagues, we are going to move to our case presentation. But if we still have more questions on the, on the presentation of converting from short acting to long acting opioids, um, we can still use the chat box. And I think that's the only um, um, form of communication that we can use for now because we are going to move to our case presentation. So don't be afraid to use the chat box. We will attend to the question or comments that you would have um, written there. Um, so for to um, for our case presentation today, we have Mr. Saber Kele, who is our Manzini um, palliative care regional nurse here at Eswatini Hospice at Home. He is going to be giving us today's um, case presentation. Over to you, Mr. Kele. Thank you, Nancy. Good afternoon, colleagues, once again. <clears throat> Uh, as Messi has just said, I'm Samuel Lukele, a, a palliative care nurse at Hospice at Home, based at Manzini region. So uh, our case presentation for today, I think it will know, it will be a short one due to the interest of time. So this is our patient uh, who is a, a female, a, a 72 year old female, uh, diagnosed with uh, osteoarthritis, the OA. So the problem, the main problem or a concern about our patient is, uh, yes, the client is taking a pain medication, uh, particularly step two, uh, but it, it has less or, or no relief. Uh, our concern here yeah, maybe it can be caused by the patient, our patient here yeah, is staying with, uh, with grandchildren who are always absent during the day. Mm -hmm. So this causes the pain management uh, poor since she is uh, bedridden and there is no one who is present to, to assist. Uh, our client when she is alone. So chief complaints, uh, the patient has generalized pain that is always there, regardless of pain medication administration. Uh, she is unable to change position due to severe pain. Uh, the pain score all, uh, normally it ranges from seven to eight out of 10. And uh, she has now developed bed sores on the heels and hips uh, because there is uh, uh, no chance of, of, of changing positions. Since I mentioned earlier on that she is always alone at home, and the children will find that they are at schools or some, some other time, they will come from school and go back because. Uh, those are teenagers, you know what teenagers do, they go at, at, at afternoon and come back at, uh, at, at night or <clears throat> two in the morning. So that's, that's the case of our clients. There is no one uh, yet who is able to take care as, 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 as a caregiver. So on assessment, she, uh, she was well hydrated. There was normal skin tagger, uh, stable, and uh, she was well oriented. Uh, nutritional treatment is fair. The normal, she has normal gastrointestinal system. So, under medical history, she is a known hypertension. Uh, started treatment on, 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 on March 2017 on first line 
uh, STTZ. There, there was no history of uh, diabetes mellitus and possible symptoms. Uh, there is a history of anemia. She was then enrolled in palliative care on the 11th of June, 2020. So under medication, uh, initially, when we enrolled our client, she was on, on hydrochlorothiazide, CTZ. Uh, she received those, she received the medication from, from the local facility. Uh, current medication, she is now on tramadol, uh, 50, milligram, 50 milligrams to PO, paracetamol, one gram PO, diclofenic, uh, 50 milligrams, uh, and calcium gluconate for, 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 for the joints. Uh, so on assessment of pain, uh, it, uh, because there were two, two different, different uh, reaches or different locations of the pain. The first one, uh, the pain duration here was chronic. Uh, sorry for the other one. Uh, I didn't write there, it is chronic also. The characteristics here, the pain one is aching. Uh, the second one is aching and, 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 and depending sensation. Then the rating here, uh, the first one is 10 out of 10, is seven out of 10, sorry. Then the second one is eight out of 10. Uh, periodicity, uh, it was constant both. Uh, the precipitation factors, uh, it's, it, it, it was uh, increased or enhanced by movement and activity. Then the relieving factors was medication and, 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 and change of position, which is somewhere, somehow relieving the pain. Yes, it does affect uh, sleep. Uh, also, it does affect uh, mobility. Then the, the effect of medication yeah, is partial. So the in intensity there, um, we, 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 I captured here three visits. The first one was done on the 24th of January, 2023. Then the, 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 the other one was 15 December, 2022. Then the, 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 the third one was 16, uh, 16 of November, 2022. Uh, the first one, the location of the pain uh, was the waist and joints. Uh, the scale of six over 10. Then the duration there was, the pain was there for months and the possible cause was uh, movement and, and activity. So the treatment that was given there was tramadol, uh, diclofenic and, um, and, uh, and, 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 and paracetamol. Then the uh, visit, visit two on, 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 on December, uh, it was almost the same. The pain score there was seven over 10. And the last one uh, on the 16th of, of, of November, the pain score there was, 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 was eight over 10. So the treatment here is, is, is the same. So the progress following intervention here, yeah, the patient can now be able to sleep after administering pain medication because we did uh, a, a, a lot of, 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 of health education even to the, to the, to the, to the grandchildren, which, which, which are the, the caregivers for now for the patient. So they are able to be present now and again uh, uh, to, to monitor uh, our patient. So also pain relieved uh, by change of position uh, following the ongoing health education. Uh, under, under social history and, and pertinent family history, uh, education uh, is, is, is non applicable. Uh, Social economic class is no. Uh, she is a widow uh, by marital status. Uh, the living uh, lifestyle habits is none, and the relevant health conditions in the close family members is unknown. And uh, 
advanced care directives. Uh, DNR uh, and DNI orders is none. Then the advanced decision for refused treatment is none. Also, the living way, there is no living well uh, that was uh, there. Uh, yes, there is a proxy. Uh, there is a healthcare proxy, uh, which is uh, her daughter. Unfortunately, the daughter is not staying with her. Uh, the mental capacity, uh, the mental capacity was assessed uh, under the review of systems, uh, the vital signs of 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 of, of the, the the patient. We couldn't measure the temperature because we, 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 the tool was not uh, available at that time of, uh, of, of, of assessment, uh, but we, 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 were able to, we were able to assess the BP, the blood pressure, which was 138 over 90. Uh, then the pulse there was 77 beats per minute, and the respirations there were 17 uh, breaths per minute. The pain score on that assessment or that, that particular visit was 10 over 7. Then the ECOC uh, functionality score uh, is 3. Uh, she is able to, to move and do uh, not much, but uh, she is on ECOC 3. Then uh, under 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 symptoms, uh, uh, the the pain there was 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 moderate. Uh, there was no dyspnea. Uh, anxiety was mild. Uh, depression there there was none. Then the drowsiness and fatigue uh, is mild. Uh, nausea there was no nausea at that at that visit. Then anorexia there. Uh, the, the appetite here is normal. Constipation here was there was a little bit of uh, of, 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 of constipation when we assess the patient. Then there is no dry, dry mouth, it's none. Then the poor mobility uh, is, is 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 moderate because the patient is confined uh, in bed. So under 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 forecast invest, investigations, there there is none applicable. Then we we we, we did uh, further plans uh, uh, regarding the patient's health. Uh, the patient uh, was uh, we are planning to refer the patient to the medical officer for further management with regards to pain uh, management. Uh, then we, we are planning there to, to, to engage a social worker on, on, on psychosocial management, also to promote and encourage the use of uh, non-pharmacological pain management techniques to, re to relieve uh, pain. So there is a need to conduct a family meeting to promote social issues uh, there. So also to strengthen the relationship with the local uh, rural health motivator for, for regular home visits to keep the patient calm uh, so, that we, uh, so that the patient uh, can be calm. Uh, I have mentioned earlier on that the, the, the patient today is always alone and needs someone to talk to. So we are planning to engage the, the RHM to be there uh, if the RHM is not uh, uh, readily available, to conduct uh, the home-based carers because there are home-based carers in the communities so that they can keep the patient company. So I think that marks the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kele, for the clear presentation. And I believe um, Oh, I would like to appreciate the effort that you have actually put um, in supporting and taking care of this patient. Um, so do we have any questions based on the case that has just been presented by Mr. Kele or any comments or contributions that we would want to make in order to 
help him better manage uh, the climate. Yeah, there's a hand with <coughs> Mr. Puayo. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly, for today's presentation. Mine is just a piece of advice. I would advise for the preparation of supplements like your folic acid and ferrosulfate, as the client is known to be anemic. Also, occasional tests are ideal since the client is anemic. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pius, for that um, advice. Um, I'm seeing a hand from Nambumelelo. Thank you once again, Mr. Lukele, for the presentation. Firstly, may I kindly acknowledge the, the work burden over the nurses the hospice. I'm from there. They are overworked. One nurse for the whole region of so many clients. This one that he's presenting on was admitted on palliative care in 2020. But up to now, they are still planning on referring the patient to, for social, psychosocial management. Uh, uh, there's so many things that they, they, they can do for the patient, but because they are short staffed, there's always that inability to make follow up as needed by the patients there. I wish there could be some volunteers to help relieve, relieve these nurses. They are really working. And the other thing is that they, they go there once, they assess the pain, and we found that most of the time they reach the place of up, up, the place where the patients stay. They are always, most of the time, they are far away from the nearest clinics or nearest hospitals where they can find doctors to prescribe stronger medication for the pain that they've assessed and they found to be the score of those patients at that moment. I was hoping there could be maybe once in a week, a, a, a volunteer, a doctor to volunteer to help them here and there with the prescription of those opioids. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kosi, for your contribution. Um, I don't know if we have any other questions or comments. I believe Mr. Kelly is able to capture um, the advice or contribution um, brought forward by colleagues. Do we have any other questions or any advice on how we can better manage the client? I, I don't know if um, Dr. Smetlana, sorry for putting you on the spot. I don't know if there's anything maybe that you want to comment on um, for this case, or any other colleagues that, that you are with. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm trying to look when we talk about non-pharmacological intervention, if the team is uh, equipped with uh, uh, rehabilitation officers or do we train the same nurses because I can feel that like there is too much work for them also. So the support they need, what, you know, how, how far are we with getting that support from the available resources that the ministry has? Um, thank you, Dovotela. Can Mr. Masham take the on? Okay, what is this comment? I don't know to go to whether training for the team or for the for the client. The resources availability for the help of the client or the capacity building for the team. Okay, I, I think to start with, okay, I understand that we are limited on with the human resource, but where we can start is to train the officers before so that they are the ones we can train the patients because. Like when you go to a physiotherapist, it doesn't necessarily that the physiotherapist is the one who will do all those uh, activities for you, but it will teach you as a patient what you must do at home. 
So I think they can also, we can use our physiotherapists and occupational therapists to train the officers who goes to the community to teach patients. Um, thank you, Dr. Taylor. I think what you're mentioning is very key and we are going to take note of that and start working on it because I think it will also make our job or our work easier and it will also be able to help the clients better manage themselves as well because as um, Maria Lamini mentioned, it could take a bit time to return and visit mm -hmm. that client. So I think it is something that we are going to work on and we would really appreciate any support from your side. Um, wherever you can probably fit in, we would really appreciate and welcome that support in terms of capacitating um, the officers or the nurses and social workers. Um, thank you, Dr. Taylor. I'm seeing a hand um, from Nakumelelo. Thank you, Shabang, once again. I, I wanted to just to ask you how far is the nearest clinic to the, the patient that we are talking about so that we know how to work with those people who are nearest to the patient for issues like the ones we, was, we are supposed to, to do regularly, like the changing of the position. There could be people at the nearest clinic who could help now and again. So if only the, 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 the clinic that was nearer to the patient was, was nearer enough to do that part. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you. Thank you so much, uh, colleague. Uh, the, the, the nearest or the local facility here, it, 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 it's a... Uh, uh, it, it, it's far uh, as far as, as the condition of the patient is concerned. Uh, it is very far. Uh, the patient may need uh, something like a high need to transport her to the facility, the nearest facility, because in kilometers I can I can estimate of about five kilometers from where she is staying. So the option here of, 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 of uh, finding uh, the local RHM was, was our best option because I have mentioned earlier on, on, on the social economic status that in the, the, the homestead is low, so she cannot afford to regularly visit the facility. So some of, of the services rendered there are, are being conducted by, by the Swati Hospice at all, if not all. Mm -hmm. So if there is a need of, of, of her uh, going to the hospital, the, the patient uh, needs to hire a car so that it can take the patient to, 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 the, to the hospital. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's not that near. So the help from the local facility can be, can be a little bit scarce for the client. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Keller, for, for that clarity. Um, just to add a little bit on maybe where we can also get support from for the client. Um, if the client is part of any organized religion, you might find that um, in, in case, or if the client is Christian or anything like that, you might find that the brethren sometimes are able to come in and help the client whenever they can. So I think that's also another um, side that we can also try to tap into to see if the client does belong to any part um, or is any part of an um, organized religion. I don't know if we have any other questions or comments. Okay, there's a hand from Sibongile. Thank you so much, Mercy. Thank you so much, Mr. Bukele, for the presentation. It's, it's hard work indeed. And uh, it's a long way to go until our patient is made comfortable. I've seen that the, 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 your client has suffered a lot when they say it's 2020, when she was in here, she should be suffering so many pains. And uh, you've covered me, see the, the, the spiritual pain. That one I was thinking of saying it should be covered too. And 
I'm saying thank you a lot for, for the efforts because you've, you've done you've done so much in this patient and even recommended something like uh, non-pharmacological and when you look at the patient after after tannings and so on and so on there was a little bit of, of, of relief from the pain and I was thinking that on what you've done maybe if we were able to go back to assess the patient maybe in a matter of a week, you find that even the pain score would drop, and then maybe you play around with the with the with the tablets there, uh, and maybe see if you can maybe uh, look at what you can give, and maybe cut something on on, on, on those tablets there for the pain, and then it's a matter of time that we, we, as Dr. said, we should start slow and go slow and maybe observe that patient for, for a week if the, 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 the medication is, 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 is the, the right dose for, for the patient. It's a matter of time and maybe something can be done. You'll find that you, 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 you can be able to add some, some of it. That's like the have said that you need some anti-hematemics for the patient, uh, I was thinking of that. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Mboni, um, for that addition and contribution to today's case. Um, thank you, colleagues, so much for um, participating in our session today. I believe that we all have learned so much from it. And I think that we can always revisit um, the sessions because we do have a YouTube channel where we can revisit just to sit down and look through things again so that we can be able to get um, as much information um, from these sessions as we can. Um, so we, we have just shared a feedback link in the chat box. Um, kindly click on that link and give us feedback um, on how today's session went so that we can improve um, for our upcoming sessions. Um, thank you for your patience throughout the session. Um, so our, our next session will be on the 8th of March, where we will be looking at um, prescribing practice and um, opioid conversions. So we are hoping to see you on the 8th of March, colleagues, and we are encouraging you to invite other colleagues onto the platform so that we can all learn and we can be able to um, help each other as we take care of our clients. Um, so thank you colleagues. Remember to click on the feedback, feedback link and um, give us the link. And we would like to apologize. We were not able to send in um, reminders for, for today's session in time, but we are hoping that um, our coming session will be able to remind you in time so that you can prepare yourselves and be able to invite other colleagues um, for our session. Um, thank you, colleagues. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you, my Let's meet on the next session. Bye. 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 Bye.